Hello and welcome back to the channel and today I'm taking you to East Sussex to a small village called Wilmington. So we're just outside the village and we've got a few of the older properties here and um, Wilmington Village is just over in that direction. So the reason that we've um, come here is um, I'm interested in uh, some of the Neolithic structures and um, up on the hill I don't know that we can pick it up here but just up on the hill above those trees right there is the long man of Wilmington and above him are some ancient burial mounds um, but beyond that uh, Wilmington is a very pretty Sussex village and it also has a 1600 year old yew tree so uh, we're starting off here just outside the village and here we've got an old cottage lovely sculpture in the garden but look at the size of the uh, upstairs windows tiny so all of this area has been rewilded um, and um, I'm actually sort of um, when I do these walks up on the downs, I'm retracing uh, our ancestors. In this particular video, I'm retracing my own steps um, because some of my ancestors used to live in this area. So up until about the age of 10, it was regular for me to be coming over here. So these are new additions and uh, there is an old footpath at the end of here. and. Um, due to rewilding, um, not particularly clear where it is, but uh, yeah, got to head down this direction. I'm not sure what the strut these uh, sculptures are for. There is a, um, a yard down there doing some stuff, so maybe it's advertising for the business down there. But yeah, you wouldn't know this is a footpath. It definitely is a footpath because uh, at the end there is a footpath sign and there is a small bridge here looks like I'm going to get stung again isn't it um, yeah so what we're going to do I'm gonna, we're going to get over the uh, main road here which is very very busy and get into the village and I'll just show you down the village I've stopped off at the Wishing Well Tea Rooms. Uh, this used to be an old pub and uh, for my family we used to come here have a drink and then put some money into the Wishing Well. Not sure whether any of those wishes have come true. Maybe we should get there another go. This is the old Wishing Well. Penny for your thoughts. The uh, houses in Wilmington are two to three hundred or four hundred years old but uh, this being called Adelsfield I imagine this was a field that got given up for social housing in the 1930s. Um, amazing old cottage this one. I don't know whether the camera is going to pick it up but um, it's only just sort of holding itself together. and a lovely array of flowers. If you swing round this way you'll be able to see the curve in the wall. So obviously a timber framed uh, building that has evolved over time and uh, the timber frames filled with brickwork. And here we have the old baker's 
a bakery as it says. How amazing would it be to get up and pop down to this building to get you a loaf of bread in the 1800s. So initially I thought all of these cars were from tourism but it doesn't seem to be. I think these are the homeowners of Wilmington just not either having anywhere to park their car or um, having too many cars and having to, to dump them on the road. See many of these old phone boxes today. Let's just see what this one's being used for. According to that, it's still a phone box. So normally these have been uh, either had defibs or books put into them. So uh, another old cottage here. One on the other side. These uh, tiled cottages are quite traditional. Uh, interesting when we have a look at this one it says it's the old post office. This one's a fascinating building isn't it? We've got this little gully running alongside it. Hunter's Dean it says. Which I guess it could be a uh, a new name for it but quite a grand doorway and like the cottage down there you can see where the old timber frames blowing out but actually if we have a look at the roof the roof's in not in much better shape either and here we've got the old in-house again <laughs> the window looks like it's about to fall out the front of it. Lovely old cottage here. Some lovely colours in Sussex at the moment. These purple flowers really do brighten up a walk. And uh, that one over there says stable cottage so I'd imagine that would have been used as a stable. <laughs> Interesting looking at this one here, we've got this old uh, door in the loft. Um, generally that's for like a granary or something that they would sort of drop the grain out the top. I'm not sure what it's used for. Beautiful old cottage. Of these um, signposts. So you can tell we're getting closer to the downs because at the side of the road they put this little gutter in and uh, the downs often has a lot of water runoff so I imagine in winter seasons uh, that turns into a little stream and some lovely old buildings on the left and uh, again looks like a hatchway from some kind of barn up there very interesting old buildings not too much further now and we'll head up to the 12th century church um, apologies if you haven't been able to hear me very clearly there's something going on with my through. Um, don't feel bad in any shape or form but uh, it's definitely affecting my voice. This gateway's intriguing isn't it? So it's padlocked. There's an old set of stairs that go up probably to the cottage at the top. Here we go, stairs to the church. Lovely old uh, set of stone steps leading up to the church. So here we have Wilmington Church and uh, it's the 12th century church. 
So this was uh, erected after the Norman invasion. We're not too far from Hastings, uh, 1066 invasion. It's quite an unusual church, to be honest. Um, it's a real mix of old, new, and not very Norman features. So uh, it's a flint church mixed in with some of these bigger stones as well. Um, with some more modern additions here. Um, as you can see, the stone's very weathered on it. Um, and when you're inside, um, you've got some very ornate stained glass, and then other parts of it, like this end window, just plain lit glass, which I guess when this church would have been erected. Um, it probably would have been plain glass and I think the uh, stained glass is a much later addition. But the interesting thing about this church, other than this magnificent U, which we'll come to in a minute, um, is the tower. Um, so it's got a bell tower, but it's a very simple wooden bell tower. And if you know a thing about the Normans, um, then the Normans used to like making stone towers on their churches. Uh, the reason being is that it was easily defendable that way. Um, they would get up there and if uh, the people in the surrounding area revolted against the Normans, um, they could retreat to the church and defend the church. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go and have a look inside a uh, lovely boot scraper here if you're into boot scrapers yeah go and have a little pop inside and uh, see what we can see We are inside the church and as you can see overall it's in very good condition. So I was saying outside it's unusual that we've got these uh, stained glass windows over here and here and some plain glass just over on this side here. Um, magnificent smell inside this church. Um, it is a Sunday that I'm filming it on so it's possible when they had the ceremony um, they were using frankincense similar smell to frankincense in here but uh, yeah wonderful smell coming through um interesting the way that these uh walls almost look like they're um sloping in i mean they are sloping into my eyes unless my glasses are warping it um i'm guessing that's to because they're made of flint obviously to stop them almost like a pyramid structure um thicker at the base thinner at the bottom um so they don't topple over um, interesting floor, I would imagine this is uh, Victorian, being that it's a ceramic. And I uh, love this little cheeky cherub hiding in the side of the wall. Um, but in some ways um, it, it, it's magnificent because of these wonderful archways the amazing stonework and the archways and, and but a very plain ceiling and very plain walls um, very interesting um, church brickwork floor as well so the original stone floor gone and replaced um, probably I would imagine around this sort of time 1621 we've got written on that stone um, another interesting thing is, I'm sure, what this is. Comment down below if you do know what that is. Some kind of stone. I don't know whether it, we've got a circular pattern on here. Maybe a maybe a millstone. Uh, maybe a wind from a windmill. So I believe windmills are utilised up on the downs nearby. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed having a look around this church. We're going to head on out and head back to the car. 
So one of the reasons that um, I enjoy getting out and walking in the places that our ancestor walked, uh, like the uh, hill forts and the um, burial mounds up on the South Downs, you can directly feel yourself retracing the steps of your ancestors. And um, I have two ancestors that are buried in this particular churchyard. So for me, it's, um, it's an important uh, place to revisit. And it's interesting to see how um, it's been left pretty much to ruin. I don't know whether that's because of the eco mob. Um, a little bit of trimming done over on this section here but um, yeah I mean I guess if you're buried do you really want people walking around on top of you don't know um, but this would have been a sundial here but it's been broken off and just left um, but it's interesting to see um, this uh, amazing old yew tree and again if you're used to this channel you'll know that I do love a yew tree uh, and this one is absolutely magnificent. It is huge and ancient and, and would have been here way before this church would have been uh, erected. Um, I would estimate 1500 to 2000 years old, this yew tree, judging by its, its size. Um, and this is a 12th century church. So uh, it's commonly thought that the yew tree is planted around the church to basically stop um, animals from uh, grazing on the graveyard but in this case it's clear that this tree was here a long time before the church and um, we we're on a little raised mound here so it would have been on a on a hill uh, when it would have been planted or landed here for the first time so we've got a little sign on here and uh, yeah, my estimation was right. They're saying 1600 years old. But uh, one of the unique things about yew trees is that you can't accurately age them. Um, if we have a look here, um, the inside of the tree comes out um, and uh, you can't count the rings on it like you would on a normal tree. So it's very difficult to age a yew tree. Um, but they're magnificent because of all of the different colours that you get. You've got some reds here and some browns. You often see some greens and we've got some whites over here. Really unusual as trees go and really unusual bark because it sort of just peels away. Um, and being coniferous as well, I guess this is the success of the yew trees. It can ride out those uh, those droughty summers um, and those wet winters as well that we get here in Sussex. Um, as you can see, um, because of its age, um, it has been supported by these uh, extra tin timbers here. It's almost like um, spider legs hanging down from the tree. So he's um, often Wiccan tree worship, maybe not, might just be decoration, but um, yeah, usual to see uh, that in a, in a church graveyard. I've seen it out uh, in Kingly Vale. So I've parked the car in the Long Man of Wilmington car park, which looks to me like it is part of the old priory just walking past what remains of the priory. Got an old cottage there. And up there, small part of the uh, original priory building. Um, in part two, we'll get some better images of the priory. And then the last thing before we get back to the car park, uh, just over here, being that uh, Wilmington is very agricultural, um, we have here the 
village pound. So this would be used for storing animals. So you'd uh, put your sheep and cows in there, use these to stop them running away. And even back in these days, they used to do some recycling using a horseshoe to hold it in place. So just getting sights of the long man here. So this is the car park for the long man of Wilmington. So this is where I'm going to end up the video. I'm going to do part two where we go up to see the Neolithic hill forts and burial mounds up above uh, the long man of Wilmington. I'll post a link in the description below. If you could hit like and subscribe it will help me to make more videos just like this.